Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. You know, over-the-counter drugs are the easiest way to self-medicate when you need fast relief from common health ailments. However, our next guest says taking over-the-counter shortcuts can be a health hazard. Here with her advice on how to navigate your local drugstore aisles is Dr. Taz. Welcome to the Thank show. You. Excited to be here. I'm so happy to have you because I, I'm guilty of a lot of this. Uh, let's first talk about the difference between active versus inactive ingredients. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people don't really realize that there are over 300,000 over-the-counter medications. You can walk in your drugstore and pick any one at any given moment, right. but only 10% of those drugs have active ingredients. The other 90% it's fillers. It's things like parabens that affect our hormones, phthalates that affect our kidneys or our lung, dyes with our kids, it's yeah. affecting their behavior. So you've got so many different additives in these things that can affect our overall health. And the worst is 300,000 medications, we layer them on so we up our toxic load. Oh, well, why would they do? Why would they do that? Is it about money? Is it about well, killing the people? <laughs> I mean, what are they doing? What are we I, don't, doing here? I don't think anyone intentionally sets out for that. But right. to keep these medications stable historically through time chemicals were okay. Yeah. We didn't have the history to understand that these chemicals are really affecting our health and I see this every day in my practice. Okay, all right. So now you say there are three <coughs> common over-the-counter meds people tend to make mistakes with. What exactly are those? Well, let's start with pain meds. So okay. pain meds, you may use this. Oh, I know I, a ton of people oh. that use it. You know, you take these pain meds, you roll them on and you hope your pain will go away, but they're meant to be used for the short term, not to be used long term. Okay. Many of the conventional pain meds out there, like we have, I believe, BioFreeze on here and Icy Hot, Oh my those gosh, actually have, <laughs> they have a chemical called DMD hydantoin that releases formaldehyde in your body. Oh, that is going oh, to affect your health. Yes. Formaldehyde is never a good word. So again, I'm working with a company called Genexa. I'm on their medical advisory board. They are working to get the chemicals out of our over-the-counter medications. So here instead, we've got a different version called Pain Crush mm -hmm. that has aloe vera, organic glycerin, much better for the body. Oh, wow. Okay, thank you. So I mean, you're saying not even short term, this is, we don't even need to be using those types of you things. You know, we're, small doses sometimes don't make okay. a big deal. If you use it for a day or two, no big deal. Right. But again, when you're using it over for and over pain. again, and then you're layering it, yeah. right? You're going to do this medication, that medication, you're going to put it on top of each other. Right. That's when we have a problem. All right, let's move on to yes. sleep aids. Okay, this one I see every day in practice. I always meet a patient who is taking a sleep aid every single night. Most sleep aids have an active ingredient called diphenhydramine. Diphenhydramine is dangerous if you have heart conditions, if you have glaucoma, if you have any kind of lung issues, it can be very hard on the body. So these over-the-counter sleep aids were actually meant to be used a day, two days, maybe three days at the max. But I have so many patients that tell me, oh, Dr. Taz, every night I take, mm. you know, my 25 milligrams of my sleep aid and I've been doing it for years. Yeah. That's not the intention behind these over-the-counter medications. They should not be used that way. So for people who are having problems sleeping, what would you say to them not, obviously you don't want them to use these products, what will you say for them to use or what do they need to adjust in their lives? Well, I mean, there's so many different reasons why people today aren't sleeping. We're a high stress generation, but before we even get into all of that, there are a lot of great natural remedies. Okay. We have melatonin sitting here. That's over the counter now. It's a great way to help you fall asleep. Mm -hmm. There's magnesium, which helps you both fall asleep yep. and stay asleep. Natural things, they work with the body, not against the body. Okay. So think about those instead. Okay. All right, melatonin. I love that. And magnesium. Selena and I talked about that the yes, other day. Yes, my favorite. All right. So I'm very guilty of diuretics. I heard. <laughs> well, you know, when I get ready for a photo shoot, I might, you know, get the little water pills. Yes. But you're you're saying no. I'm saying no, and I'm so sorry. It's but okay. that is how a lot of people are using these diuretics that are over the counter. Again, that was not the intention. The intention was to lose water, but for people who needed to lose water for other reasons, for medical conditions. Right. So again, you have to be super careful with this. This is a big one. You should not be using it for weight loss. <laughs> and the repercussions of it, if it works badly or builds up in your body, you can get dizzy, you can have irregular heartbeats, you can have palpitations. These are serious and, things and to be worried about. Well, and kidneys as well. And your kidneys, absolutely. So oh these are things God. to truly be worried about yeah. when you're taking these medications. Okay, now who is at risk for overdosing on over-the-counter drugs? I think number one, anytime you're using more than one, you're at risk. Anytime you're using them for an extended period of time, more than three to five days, you're at risk. And if you're using over-the-counter medications in place of seeing your doctor, you're going to be at risk. Okay, okay, because I just did this with my 
had a daughter, she was coming down with the cold and gave her a little medicine and things seemed to be okay. But it, do, would you say that's okay in small doses or? You know, it's okay for a short 24 to 48 hours. Okay. And, and that's that very it. common, by the way. Seven out of 10 parents will do that. They'll yeah. use over-the-counter medications before they consult with their doctor. Absolutely. 24 to 48 hours, you can get away with it. Anything more than that, you need to talk to your doctor. All right. Tell us about your new book, Superwoman yes. Rx. Yes. Well, my yeah. book is Superwoman Rx. It came out last September, but it's all about women's empowerment and how there is a chemistry to empowerment. Huh. And if we understand who we are, there are five key types. If you understand who you are, you have a formula for living your best life, huh. having your best emotional health, energetic health, your best weight. And you kind of sift through all the information out there in terms of what's the diet for me? What are the supplements for me? What's right. the exercise routine for me? So I just really wanted it to be a how-to book for women so they knew, like you just said, we birthed this nation. Yes. We are in charge. We are powerhouses. But when we go down, everybody else goes down around Absolutely. us, right? So this was in hopes that it would help women everywhere. What's the response been like before we let it's you go? It's been amazing. Yes. People have loved it. They've gravitated towards it. You know, they finally, you know, they finally feel like they have a resource that okay. they can go to to understand themselves. Good. Well, you are an amazing resource. Thank we you. appreciate you for more information you. on all that she does and all this amazing, <laughs> valuable information. Please go to drtaz.com. Yes. Yeah.